Hello again, everybody. I'm Roger Hoover. Glad to welcome you back to the Crimson Tide Sports Network and welcome to this Thursday edition of Crimson Drive driven by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Make sure you check them out online at TuscaloosaToyota.com. We're having one edition of the show this week as Tuesday and really the start of the week was very busy for Alabama athletics with football playing in the national championship game home on Tuesday night for men's basketball against Auburn. And today we'll recap all of that coming up on Crimson Drive again driven by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Now we'll take a look at what's coming up on the show today. Thanks to the smart board that's been furnished by our friends at RJ Young. And don't forget, RJ Young is the official technology solutions provider of Crimson Drive. Starting with what's coming up on the show, we'll have some courtside cam highlights from the Auburn game and men's basketball, some of the great moments, and there were plenty of great moments, including that great dunk by J.D. Davison to look back on. So we'll have the courtside cam highlights featuring Chris and Brian on the screen. Chris Stewart and Brian Passink uh, had a segment in the postgame show where they really broke down the game and talked about what's next for Alabama men's basketball. So we'll have that for you as well from our courtside cam. And then we'll be joined by Nick Kelly of the Tuscaloosa News for Riders Row as we'll be talking about Crimson Tide football, the loss to Georgia in the national championship game, plus a little basketball conversation as well. And then we'll close out the show by hearing from the head coach of the Crimson Tide women's basketball team, Christy Curry, as well as her point guard, Hannah Barber, talking about what's next for Alabama women's basketball starting tonight on the road at Ole Miss. So we continue with our headlines for today. We will talk first about Crimson Tide men's basketball. Again, had a great atmosphere inside Coleman Coliseum. It was sold out for the first ranked matchup between these two rivals, Alabama and Auburn. First time it had been ranked matchup since 1987, and it was a thriller. Tied late at 75. Auburn does get the win, 81-77 to over the Crimson Tide as Javon Quinterly led Alabama with 14 points. Another good game by Jaden Shackelford with 13 points for Alabama as he was able to score some late for the Crimson Tide. With the loss, Alabama now 11-5 on the season and 2-2 two two in SEC play. Back-to-back -back losses to Missouri and Auburn. So next opportunity to bounce back will be coming up at Mississippi State in Star Phil at 5 p.m. Our radio coverage will begin at 4 o'clock for the Tide and the Bulldogs. Women's basketball. We'll be hearing Coach Curry a little bit later in the show. Uh, on Sunday, had a great lead against Georgia, a 19-point lead at halftime on Sunday in Athens, but ultimately it was Georgia rallying back, winning 72-68 to as Jenna Stady, outstanding uh, forward for Georgia, had 14 points in the second half. Alabama led or was led in the ball game by Brittany Davis. She scored 18 points. She made six three-pointers in the first half, but unfortunately did not make a shot in the second half as Georgia rallied to get the win. Now Alabama tonight, an opportunity against Ole Miss at 6 p.m. from the SGB, SJB Pavilion. They renamed it over this past offseason, but uh, going to the Pavilion at Ole Miss, 6 o'clock tonight. Our radio coverage starts at 555 across the network. Alabama has won six of the last seven against Ole Miss, so a lot of recent success for Alabama. Did lose last time against the Rebels in Tuscaloosa last February, but trying to pick up yet another win at the Pavilion, a place Alabama women's basketball has never lost. Then some other football or headlines that, of course, involve football, uh, losing to Georgia in the national championship game on Monday night as Alabama had a lead in the fourth quarter before Georgia rallied to get that win. Some really good news this week. Uh, one of our favorites, Sylvester Croom, someone we hope to have on this show coming up in the next few weeks. He was selected to the 2022 College Football Playoff Hall of Fame class. So a huge congratulations to Coach Croom, who was a great center for Alabama, part of some great teams, later an assistant coach as well, and then uh, went on to be the head coach in Mississippi State. Great honor for him being selected to the College Football Hall of Fame. Gymnastics also started its season this past Sunday on the road against a very good Oklahoma team. Had a tight, narrow loss against the Sooners. And now this week, the eyes of the nation will be on Alabama gymnastics because ABC, for the first time ever, is televising a regular season women's gymnastics meet as Alabama ranked uh, in the top five of the country takes on the Florida Gators coming up in Gainesville. So that will begin at 2 p.m. Central on ABC. Hope you're able to watch that. Watch Dana Duckworth and the Crimson Tide gymnastics team with what's coming up against Florida. And then the Crimson Tide will be home soon for more gymnastics inside Coleman Coliseum. Speaking of Coleman Coliseum, we had the courtside cam fired up on Tuesday night to allow you to watch Chris Stewart, Brian Passing, Tom Stipe call the Alabama versus Auburn game. And even though it ended in a loss to the fourth ranked Tigers, we wanted to make sure you watch back some of the big highlights because there were so many for Alabama on Tuesday against Auburn. Quinterly to Gary, driving the lane to the rim. Left-handed layup is good. Took it right into the shot blocker's chest. Aggressive, taking it right at Kessler. Took a little contact and able to finish off the glass. 
Tigers drive in, dump it off, batted away by Ellis, picked up by Miles. <laughs> Darius throws it ahead, JD to the rim, lays it up and in. Bama got a layup to drop. Ellis, three, five. Great way to start the half for the Crimson Tide. Poked away, stolen. Here comes Quinterly the other way. Got numbers if you hurry. JQ on the wing. No look to JD. Lays it up and in for two, and it's a six-point game. Claimed by JQ. He'll start the break. Quinterly front court, weaving through traffic. Gives it off to Shaq. Deep three, left side, bottom. Hopefully that knocks the lid off of it. Taken away by Gurley. Let's run. We got numbers. JD going downhill. Leaves it right side. JQ, spot up three, bottom. Back to back. APS threes for Alabama. In the tide, pulls to within seven. Bama the other way down seven. JD going to the rack. Oh, mercy. Threw it home. And and one opportunity. Oh, oh, baby, what a play from JD Davison as Bama is two within five. Oh, my goodness, what a play. JD Davison against one of the best shot blockers in college basketball. Goes up high. Kessler was right with him, but JD throws it down. An and one opportunity. And the roof coming off this place tonight. Maybe that's your new top 10 play. Green giving it to Kessler, driving down the lane. That's going to be an offensive foul. He gets a dunk on one end. He takes a charge on the other. And Kessler just picked up his fifth. What back-to-back -back plays by J.D. Davidson. Able to slide over, get outside of the restricted area. As we talked about, if Alabama want to have, wanted to have a chance to win this game, it was going to start on the defensive end. Alabama's been able to do that, a 9-0 run, and that doesn't happen without Alabama getting stops, getting out in transition. A couple made threes, and the highlight dunk of the year by J.D. Davidson over the number two shot blocker in college basketball. Walker Kessler went up, tried to block it, and J.D., oh, my gosh. If you're listening at home or driving around in your car, you didn't see it, get home. That's got to be number one on Sports Center play of the day. An absolutely incredible play by J.D. Davidson. Crowd on its feet. J.D. dribbles right, gives it off. Shaq, corner three, bottom. Oh, do it, baby. Alabama, two of the two with 4.50 remaining. Tire take the lead. Davidson weaving through traffic. Darius to the rack, lays it in. Let's start. Over, tied at 73 with four minutes to go. A run out ahead. They'll go in. Reverse layup blocked by Gurley. What a play by Noah. Blocking the layup by Green. What an effort from Alabama to battle back a 14-0 run after Auburn had taken a 14-point lead. So those were the courtside cam highlights from the Auburn game. And then right after the ball game is over, Chris Stewart and Brian Passing continue talking about this game against Auburn, plus what it means moving forward for the Crimson Tide. Great ball game. When Alabama was down 14 with seven and a half minutes to go, we said if they could make it a two-possession game by that under four-minute media timeout, it would be a lift and it would give you a chance. Little did we know it would be a 14-0 run by Alabama and we were deadlocked when we got to that timeout. Unfortunately, Auburn wins it down the stretch with two late buckets and a couple of key stops. Yeah, Alabama uh, put themselves in a position to win this game when it didn't look good. You got to give Alabama a ton of credit for the fight they showed. They got down in a, in a game that they really struggled shooting the ball. And Auburn deserves a lot of credit. They're, they're really good defensively. Uh, but Alabama struggled shooting it. And, and outside of that stretch where they did knock down a couple threes, it was one of those games where we felt like you would need to make shots at a much higher rate than Alabama's been making them. And they did 23% from the three-point line. Not good enough for Alabama. And Auburn, a very good team, played well. They, they were able uh, to go to their top player, Jabari Smith, 25 points. And... Uh, he was terrific in this one, as was Wendell Green Jr. Alabama had a, a great chance to win it late in the game. Had some good looks, but Bama, no field goals in the last four minutes and had some really good looks. May have run out of gas uh, trying to come back from a 14-point deficit. But this one hurts. It stings. Uh, disappointing loss, but great effort, especially in the comeback. I think it's something that you can build off of. I, I agree. Brian, we said Alabama was going to be hard-pressed 
to win the rebounding total, but they couldn't be dominated in this one. As we take a look at the rebounds and controlling the boards presented by Cook's Pest Control and Centricon, the unbeatable combination for termite protection. 44-42, Auburn did win the edge, but again, it was not a dominant effort on the glass that kept Alabama very much in this game. Yeah, and especially during that run where Alabama was able to get stops, close out defensive possessions. And, you know, it, it's it's moments like that or that, that, that five minutes, four or five minutes that you see how good this team could be. Uh, when they're getting stops, when they are really dialed in on the defensive end and play with a sense of desperation on that end of the floor, we know what they can do offensively, even in a game where they don't shoot it well. But during that run, it started on the defensive end. Alabama got stops and not only got back in this game, but had all the momentum, just couldn't get over the hump, had some great looks, not go down late, uh, some tough possessions. All were very good defensively, but there are a couple possessions Alabama would like to have back late in that game. But listen, Auburn deserves a lot of credit. They're a top five team. They're playing better than anybody in the SEC right now. And Alabama is not. I mean, this is a team that is coming off its most difficult loss of the year against Missouri. And this would would have gone a long way to make folks feel better. Unfortunately, you didn't get it. Uh, but. I, I like some things I saw from Alabama in this game, and hopefully they'll bounce back in Starkville against a team that uh, in Mississippi State, a lot of people predict to go to the NCAA tournament. And it's hard to hard to get road wins in this league. Alabama's already got one, dropped one they should have been able to get. Uh, in Missouri, this one will be tougher uh, for Alabama against a good Mississippi State team. But got to go back to the drawing board, understand uh, that it's a long season, learn from it, get better, take the things that you learned, and hopefully go get a road win on Saturday. Some of the thoughts from Brian Passick brought to you by Assurance Financial. You know, in less time than halftime, you could apply for a mortgage at assurancemortgage.com. Partner, we'll see you in Starkville. Go get a go get a win, get this taste out of our mouths. Great ball game, just wasn't the end we wanted. Yeah, entertaining game, and uh, uh, you know that's what we thought we'd see. Uh, we we were hoping for a different outcome, obviously, but get another shot at them in Auburn uh, in not too long, and you know, hopefully Alabama will play better and have a chance to win that one. Don't forget to watch the courtside cam for any men's or women's basketball game, home game that we have coming up at Coleman Coliseum, including coming up on Sunday when the women's team takes on Florida at 2 p.m. Also, it was a great time to catch up with our friend Nick Kelly of the Tuscaloosa News for Riders Row. As we started the season by talking with him, we figured it was only natural to talk with him at the end of the season for the Crimson Tide as Alabama does fall to Georgia in the national championship game. But here's our conversation with Nick Kelly of the Tuscaloosa News. It's been a really busy week, a really busy start to the week for Alabama, and maybe unlike last year, started off with some losses, but how's everything going for you? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, of course, it's the week students come back to campus, and so it's, it's quite the week overall. Of course, the championship game on Monday, then you got the big Auburn-Alabama uh, game on Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, quite, the, quite the start to the week, and I wonder what the weekend will bring. Well, your first season uh, covering Alabama football, it ends in the national championship. Just what did you make, first of all, of everything in Indianapolis uh, from the way the event was organized and what you saw from the Crimson Tide or heard about how Alabama was approaching that game with practice leading up to the ball game? Man, well, I had a great time. I don't want to speak for everyone else, but I had a great time. Uh, a little chilly there, but honestly, uh, that's that's where I come from. They're not Indiana, but the Midwest. So uh, used to some of the cold, and, and they of course have their their skywalks designed quite well that you don't even have to go outside much. So that was kind of kind of a cool experience. But um, yeah, I think that overall it was. I mean, just the approach was, hey, they've got a good shot against this team, and, and it's something that um, I think they embraced a little bit. The underdog. Or, I think it was more like a disrespect than it was an underdog kind of thing. You know, we'll answer and clarify that more later on, but it was one of those things where a lot of people had counted this team out uh, throughout the year, just because it was not the Alabama team of 2020 where, yeah, the heavy favorite, you know, a bunch of upperclassmen. And so I think they just kind of kept that rolling. And uh, unfortunately in the game, just things didn't play out that it was enough for them to get the job done. Uh, but I still think they had a pretty good effort in that game and a lot to build on uh, when they bring back a lot of this young talent next year. How critical was it in the first half? Alabama had a lot of field goals, but not too many touchdowns once they got to the red zone. And that had been something that had popped up in some of Alabama's close games, even all throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, you got to get those red zone, uh, take advantage of those red zone opportunities. 
because against a good team like Georgia, you're not necessarily going to get there a lot when they've got a good defense like that. And the same could be said for Georgia against Alabama's defense, because Alabama's defense for a while in the game did not really give up uh, a whole lot to that that offense. And so, yeah, in a tight back and forth, I mean, it was a, a defensive classic for the first like half and, and really into the third quarter some too, you know, just field goals back and forth. And, and so... Yeah, you have to capitalize on those red zone opportunities so that, like, for example, I think I can't remember what quarter it was, but when uh, they got down the red zone and I think they, uh, I think there was a, maybe a drop or just a defensive back made a nice play on third down that they could complete. I mean, that touchdown could be crucial, just like it was crucial when Cameron Latou caught that touchdown uh, in the second half because they put Alabama up. So, yeah, I think red zone opportunities you have to convert on in because they could, and I think that hurt him in the end. And then with Jamison Williams going out with injury, how much did that change Alabama's offense? So what were your, some of your takeaways watching the offense the rest of the game? Well, man, it, if the young receivers wanted opportunities, they got them between Williams and Metchie being out. I mean, uh, I've, it's really tough to beat a, a great defense like that without your top two receivers because not only are they your top two receivers, but this is an Alabama offense that has been a pass-first offense throughout the year. And so when you have guys like that go out, Basically, your, your young guys or the other guys who are filling those spots have to have terrific games. And some of them fared well at times, but they also had some mistakes and some errors. And, and so they really didn't have that margin for error uh, with these uh, younger players going up against these, these great uh, Georgia de de defenders. And so, unfortunately, it just wasn't enough to get the job done. And that can be said for Alabama's defense as well. Did such a good job keeping Georgia out of the end zone in the first half and throughout most of that ball game, which is what was the big difference in the fourth quarter for Georgia to start executing uh, with their offense and Stetson that it had some success. Yeah, I think there was some uh, just being persistent, you know, just just kind of waiting until they could finally find that right play to break things open, or um, you know that long touchdown uh, that that Stetson Bennett threw to take the lead back. Uh, yeah, I just think that. Alabama's defense have been so stout and unfortunately was not getting much help from the offense that eventually in college football in this day and age, you're not going to see a lot of nine to six games uh, by the end of the game, I should say, you know, we did see nine to six at the beginning, but um, just because the nature of the sport, it favors the offensive time. And that's why of course Nick Saban and his staff had adapted um, over the years to kind of, to kind of fit that. But the, the defense is only going to slow down an offense like that. Uh, for so long and, and I just think some of it was just you know waiting it out and, and just find, finally finding plays that they could take advantage of while the defense was kind of carrying the team on its back for a while in that game. So Georgia gets the win wins the national championship breaking their 41 year drought Alabama does not go back to back as champion so what were some of your takeaways from the post game press conference coach Saban made a point to recognize how great Will Anderson Bryce Young had been all season long you made a point to recognize it while they were still in the room with him. Yeah, I mean, it was quite a moment where they were getting up to leave and, and you could tell just how distraught Bryce and Will are. I mean, they're both top level competitors and, and they don't like to lose. And and you could just tell how, just frankly, bummed they were. Um, and and I don't blame them. And but before they were about to leave, uh, you know, Nick Saban put his arms out. I think many people have seen the clip, but he put his arms out and said, hey, just hold on a second. And he was like, can I say something? And the moderator, moderator said, sure. And And he just wanted to say that, you know, they're not defined by one game. And I think in some ways, not only was he doing that to make sure they, that they knew how he felt about them, but also it kind of sets the, the stage for next year a little bit because they aren't defined by one game. Obviously, this is a very important and big game and, and loss that they probably won't ever forget. But uh, those two are coming back and they're the two cornerstones of this team. And so I think by him kind of doing or taking part in that moment and making sure that they knew how much he values them and how proud he is of them. Uh, I think he's trying to instill that confidence as they head into the offseason and get ready to attack it next year because this team's going to have a great shot again next year. Obviously, there's going to be some turnover, some different talent, uh, but they've got some really important pieces. And so I think that that moment was really important for multiple reasons for Nick Saban to take the time to do that. What are you going to remember most about this season? Uh, say 20, 30 years down the line, if you think back to the 2021 Crimson Tide, again, the first uh, Alabama team we've covered here at the Tuscaloosa News, what are you going to remember the most about this group? Man, I think it's just more so how they, in this roller coaster of a season, they kind of took part in just because it's very inconsistent. Um, they found ways to, until the very end, I mean, they, they found ways to rise to the top uh, and kind of get over that, that adversity that they talked about. And, and, and I think that, yeah, just throughout the year, I had been, I had heard and just many people had said like, yeah, this is maybe a Sugar Bowl team. This isn't necessarily a, a team that's going to be in the national championship just because they, they seem to show up a, as a different team a little bit every week. Uh, but they still found ways. And so I think that's that's one of those things I'll remember is that this team, despite the youth that it has, found ways to maybe outperform expectations. 
Well, the Crimson Tide of football season is done, but basketball, we're right in the middle of it, kind of early in SEC play. I know you, like a lot of us, were able to make the trek from Indianapolis back to Tuscaloosa in time for the Tuesday night game against Auburn. A game that really seemed like lived up to the billing. Yes, Auburn got the win, but they are the fourth ranked team in the country. Yeah, I was just considering it a win that uh, I didn't fall asleep in uh, press row. So th that was my win for the night. But yeah, it was a great game. I, I really, I mean, once Auburn went up 14, it's like, okay, yeah, this is kind of what maybe we would expect with Auburn being a really good team. And then Alabama came fighting back and and tied it up. And uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it was a good showing for Alabama, but unfortunately, you know, moral victories don't get you a, a, super far. Um, but after, after the Missouri game, which as we just saw last night, Missouri got blown out by Arkansas. This is not, not a great Missouri team. Uh, after that loss for Alabama, which was a very tough loss, even just taking Auburn to the last like minute, um, I think was important. Of course, it been, would have been great for Alabama if it could have won. Uh, but I think that just even taking it to the last minute was a really important step to maybe someone get back on track because really, I mean, the jury is still kind of out on where this, this team is at. Um, they've had the great wins against Gonzaga and, and Houston. They've had some tough losses too. So uh, yeah, I think it's, the next few weeks is going to be really interesting to see where Alabama basketball is, is at. Yeah, and with that, how important is Saturday at Mississippi State? Because after that, you got some really tough home matchups coming up starting next Wednesday with LSU. Yeah, I think that ultimately, I don't know if it's a must win, but it, it'd be really, really good to win it because, as you said, there's going to be some tough games to try to win coming up. And so, yeah, if you're Alabama, I think this is a game you need to win. Even just forget opponents or forget what's coming up. Like They just need to win. After you know a tough week with a loss to Missouri and then a loss to your to your in-state rival, uh, yeah, I think a win is really important for this team. Uh, forget the opponent, of course, it happens to be Mississippi State, but I just think this Alabama team team needs a win to continue uh, to build on going to next week. Nick Kelly covers Alabama athletics for the Tuscaloosa News. Uh, before we let you go, what can we look forward to in the paper coming up? Yeah, I mean, just kind of post-mortem coverage, if you will, the season of, you know, looking back, looking forward, there's already plenty of news, guys in the transfer portal. And so, yeah, it's just kind of that, that transition period of, for football, um, of just kind of what's, uh, you know, the nature of the off season. Of course, there's plenty of guys uh, from this neck of the woods that are going to be going to the NFL draft and always in consideration for that when you're with Alabama. And, and so a lot of coverage that way. And so senior bowls in a few weeks. And then, of course, basketball coverage. We're in the thick of the season. So we're going to have game coverage and, and more stories to come there. Well, Nick, thank you so much for joining us here on Crimson Drive, driven by Tuscaloosa and Toyota. All the best to you. Look forward to reading your work again in Tuscaloosa News. Uh, thanks a million for having me, Roger. Thanks to Nick Kelly for joining us, and now we're starting to get ready for what's next for Alabama athletics, and that really starts tonight as the Crimson Tide women's basketball team takes on the Ole Miss Rebels. It's a busy week for Alabama on the road at Ole Miss on Thursday night and at home on Sunday against the Florida Gators. And earlier in the week, Christy Curry as well as Hannah Barber had a chance to meet with the media. So some, here are some of the highlights from their press conferences. They get set for Ole Miss and then Florida. Uh, we're just excited, um, you know, again, to get back to work today. Um, obviously, um, we've had a couple of uh, close losses, and um, it's the difference between, you know, a few little things that we really have to correct, but I will say I'm so, so proud of this team, um, you know, to continue to just stay with it and try and get better every day. Well, they're all equally important. I don't know that there's a statement or non-statement win, but we just try to take them one at a time. They're all 16 equally important. Um, you know, um, everybody in our league is, is so talented. So to me, just any win is a statement win in this league. So, um, but I do love our team. I'm so, so pleased in, in their competitive spirit. I mean, they're fighting, they're clawing. They're just uh, giving it everything they've got. We've come up short. Yes, we have we have a few things we need to correct. And yes, we need a more balanced effort. Um, but th the positives are there. And again, um, the first person I look at to try and figure those things out is um, the blame's on me. And how can I put these kids in a better position to be successful? And then I know they're doing the same thing from their end. So we're all working to be part of the solution, you know, every day and to keep, keep at it. Yeah, I think Taylor's one of the people on our team that brings it every single day. Um, she doesn't, you know, get too high or get too low. She always kind of has that steady effort and energy. And I think that translates into games. Obviously, her ability, you know, off the bounce with her quickness and the way that she, she can shoot the ball um, has provided a great spark for us. But I think the results that we're seeing just come from her consistency every single day in practice. 
That was Christy Curry and Hannah Barber getting you set for Alabama women's basketball. As we start to take a look at our schedule coming up on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Again, it all begins tonight with Crimson Tide women's basketball on the road at Ole Miss. 6 p.m. start time for Alabama against Ole Miss. Then on Saturday, speaking of Mississippi, it'll be the men's team on the road to Mississippi State coming up at 5 p.m. Our coverage on the radio network will begin at 4 o'clock for the Crimson Tide and the Bulldogs. Then Sunday, Alabama women's basketball back at home inside Coleman Coliseum a tip off at 2 p.m. against the Florida Gators. We'll have a courtside cam available for that matchup as well right back here on the CTSN Facebook page. And then on Monday night, we'll start the new week with Hey Coach. As Hey Coach will be with you every Monday night through the end of April, uh, talking with Alabama men's basketball head coach Nate Oates as well as other coaches from campus. So we look forward to being back with you on Monday night, 6 p.m. for Hey Coach presented by Alpha Insurance. This is going to wrap up this Thursday edition of Crimson Drive, driven by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Thanks to Nick Kelly for joining us from the Tuscaloosa News, as well as Chris Stewart and Brian Passink with their post-game thoughts from the Auburn game, as well as Christy Curry, Hannah Barber giving thoughts on Alabama women's basketball. Special thanks to Ethan Carabin, our producer, for putting this show together, and thanks to all of you for watching. This has been Roger Hoover with you on Crimson Drive, driven by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Have a great start to your weekend. Good afternoon, and roll tide.